So now that we've gotten all the Rolex stuff out of our system, we can actually move on to some of the more interesting releases of this year's uh, Watches and Wonders Watch Fair. There truly is a lot of amazing stuff and far too much for me to go through. So I'm just going to tell you what watches I'd be interested in purchasing if I were in the market, including what I think is hands down the most stunning watch released this year. Let's take a look. So Watches and Wonders is currently underway and there's a lot of amazing watch releases that are not Rolex and not Tudor. And frankly, they're a lot more interesting. First off, we have the Cartier Tortu Monopusher Chronograph. That means the entire chronograph action happens in one crown, as opposed to something like this, where you have the, the pushers, the start, stop, and the reset, just like on a Speedy or a Daytona or whatever. This all happens in the main crown. A throwback to the 1920s, a very, very beautiful, classy, classic watch, Chamon de Fer, the oversized Roman numerals, those beautiful blue hands and so on. This is gorgeous stuff. And the Tartu case has that classic vintage look. We've seen F.P. Jorn release a watch in it and many other brands. It really is a throwback to a different era. I love pretty much everything that Cartier put out and uh, this is no exception. They also released some interesting uh, Santos watches. I'm not a huge fan of Santos. When I see bolts on a watch, I want it to also say Aubemont Piguet on the dial. That's just me. But I think I'm coming around to the Santos. This dual time is a very interesting looking watch to me. I'm not as crazy about the Santos Dumont colored uh, ones, especially that one that goes in reverse. They've got one that starts at 11 and goes all the way back to one. So in other words, the hands move in the opposite direction. I mean, it's nice to see some novelty, fun, interesting experiments, but that would just confuse the hell out of me. Out of all of these, for me, it's the, the mono pusher chronograph in that top two case. It just screams of classic beauty. Next up is the Iwutse Schofhausen or IWC Schofhausen Portugieser. I'm a big fan of this watch, as you guys know. I have the rose gold Portugieser with the ivory uh, white dial. Did a big video on that like a year ago. I'll leave a link in the description below. Very, very classic, elegant watch. But they've released some new colors here, including a dune color. <laughs> I don't know if they're trying to capitalize on the movie or whatever. I don't know if that's just a a coincidence, but the one that is most interesting is this eternal thing. Now, this is out of my price range, but really when you look at what it is, that's actually not that much money. I've seen watches that are less complex than this in platinum for the same money. This is a perpetual calendar that doesn't need resetting for like millions of years. It has some sort of system that detects when there's a leap year and counterbalances that switch over automatically. So you don't have to set this ever again, and you're certainly not in your lifetime unless you plan on living for 45 million years. Mind you, I don't know why after all of that time it needs resetting. There's a question I'd love answered. I mean, if it's going to last that long, surely it should keep going for another few million years. I mean, it's done pretty well so far. I'm not sure what it is that after that particular amount of time, it needs a resetting. But this thing is made of glass and platinum. It's got a crazy big domed sapphire crystal over that and a glass dial. It's got the double moon phase. So you've got moon in the northern and southern hemisphere. And it's just everything you want in a mega complex watch. You've got those numerals around the side of the rehot there. So it's very three dimensional. And of course, beautiful Chamon de Fer up on the top of that uh, dome or that ridge. It will outlive you by millions and millions of years. But I think most of our watches outlive us, right? Isn't that uh, really one of the beautiful things about gorgeous horology? You expect it to be still ticking in uh, hundreds or even thousands of years. That's the beauty of mechanical timepieces. Well, this one is definitely set up to be uh, ticking when uh, man, if he's still around then, is probably uh, space colonizing. Next up is Patek Philippe. I actually don't own a Patek. When I got to that crossroads, 
in the Holy Trinity, I went AP just because they're they're larger watches, and I also consider them to be more adventurous. The bad boy of the three, uh, the pop art. Uh, but these guys are getting a little experimental now, and they're getting a little less stuffy. This 5980 in white gold has this denim strap. Actually, I think it's leather, but kind of made to look and feel like denim around the outside. But that really freshens up the watch and makes it kind of youthful and sporty. And their new World Time also has that denim uh, youthful look. It's kind of a juxtaposition because these watches, of course, are made out of white gold and they're crazy money. So just to put them on denim kind of in a certain way could be seen as bringing it kind of down to a more of a working class looking kind of watch, whereas it's actually far, far from it. And I kind of like that they're doing that. They're ballsy enough to experiment with the look of their watches. On the other hand, then they've gone for the ultra stuffy by bringing back the golden ellipse probably their stuffiest watch but it is a classic and it's amazing to see it back on the roster here so that's pretty cool uh, i think out of all of these i would go for that 5980 it's probably a bit more chunky a watch than all the others we're looking at here and uh would probably suit my wrist a bit more just because of that size and the you know the girth of it and the the importance on the wrist but again, this color setup kind of freshened up uh, the watch a lot. I'd love to try it on the wrist. I definitely want to give a mention to Alange Unzune. Forgive the pronunciation if that's wrong. And their new Lumen Datagraph in Honey Gold. This thing is astonishing looking to me. I love the moon phase with the little stars there. Uh, these are high, high level watches. And this thing has some crazy loom to show off as well, which is very rare in the super high horology space. Loom can be seen as a tad uh, juvenile sometimes, and when you're dealing with super high horology, loom is really not something they include. Instead, this thing has some wild loom going on, which I think is a really uh, refreshing approach. Clearly a stunning piece, and in that gorgeous uh, r rose gold, or they call it honey gold, which I suppose is a bit more accurate. Uh, it's not as red as it is kind of honey colored. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Alange is still on my dream wish list. And uh, the more I see these beautiful new releases, the more I get tempted. I do want to give an honorable mention, and please forgive me uh, for including Rolex in this. I wasn't supposed to be talking about Rolex here, but I do want to mention the 1908. I always hear the same stuff about Rolex not innovating, and they keep regurgitating the same models over and over, whereas this model is actually quite new. It was just announced last year, and now they're exploring new options. This is one of the most breathtaking watches of the entire Watches and Wonders event, and Rolex are just getting a beating because they put the uh, the deep sea in gold and uh, re-released the 116710LN pretty much. This thing is an astonishingly elegant, beautiful timepiece and has a vintage classic look to it. I think they deserve uh, a little bit of kudos at least for releasing a watch like this. It brings me back in my mind to a, 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 an older time, a more simple time, with uh, with timepieces. Small seconds down by the six, very vintage. I love the barguet looking hour hand there with the big circle. Look at that case shape and that strap. My God, it's just simple elegance. Not to mention the gear shape dial, which is breathtaking. Well done Rolex for at least giving us something like that. But I gotta say, Hands down, the most impressive, the most stunning watch this year. And it's not just one, it's four watches. Are the Vacheron Constantin overseas with green dial. Oh my God. Absolute stunners, each and every one of them. I wouldn't know which one to pick. Probably the chronograph or the... I was about to say GMT. It's not really. It's more like a dual time. This is just everything, guys. I mean, the, the green is breathtaking. The tone of rose gold is just out of this world. 
this is just the most amazing watch I've seen in a long time. If I owned any one of these, I'd be ready to throw everything else in my collection out. They just knocked it out of the park. The shade of green is astonishing. You know it's going to be a perfectly made watch. I've actually only ever owned one Vacheron in my life. It was the Royal Eagle. I owned it for about seven or eight months. Uh, I didn't wind up wearing it a whole lot, but it was a work of art. And I got to say, the most astonishing chronograph engage and re-engage and stop and reset I have ever touched. It actually turned me off my Daytonas and my speedies and everything because of that clunky, awkward click that you get. This thing was just pure butter. It was astonishing. It was amazing. And it kept perfect time. I know deep in my heart that Fashion are probably the best of the Holy Trinity. I know that that's probably true. People love to go crazy for Patek, and I have a personal affection for, for AP. But I have a feeling that if I tried this watch on my wrist, I would just forget about everything else. Again, any one of these models is fine for me. Obviously, there's a ladies' version there in 35 mils with some diamonds on it, too. That's the watch you buy for the wife, just so she doesn't get mad at you for buying one of these others for yourself. <laughs> That's the little backup plan. We see what you're up to, Vacheron. Nicely done. But yes, they're in 41 mil and the chronograph is 42.5. I would take any one of these. The simple 300 with the date is whew, incredible. The chronograph, I'll never turn down a Vacheron chronograph after owning that Royal Eagle. It has to be seen to be believed, guys. But I, I think out of all three, that dual time is the one because of those little red accents, because I love that extra hand on a watch. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else. Failing that, I have to say, their new patrimony moon phase is crazy gorgeous. So simple, so elegant. And I have a weakness for anything with moon phase. For some reason, there's a romance in that. The Evutse Schofhausen moon faces I find to be quite cold. This is so cute with the little moon there and the stars in the background and the kind of deep blue night sky. I, that just gets me. I don't know what it is. And it's not a small watch either. This is 42.5 millimeters, and it's going to wear quite significant on the wrist because without much bezel to really speak of, you've got a large dial. Remember that, guys, when you get you know, dress watches and simpler watches that don't have a a bezel uh, to manipulate or whatever, it has an effectively larger presence on the wrist because there is simply more dial to look at. The one in rose gold I can't even look at because it's going to upset me. But I got to say, this one in white gold also, what a stunner, especially that uh, green alligator strap, just super elegant. Uh, they know how to make something simple look detailed and complex while making something very very complex look very very simple that's all i can say it's just beautiful any one of those watches i just showed would make me a very very happy man indeed and by the way i have more thoughts on the uh, subject of tudor and i'm going to make another video straight after this one all about that um having uh mixed feelings about Tudor. I love Tudor. It's a great brand. I have a few Tudor watches, but uh, I don't know. I think uh, I need to do a little rant. That's what I do best, right? Anyway, thanks for watching the channel, guys. I will see you in the next one. Peace and love.